Hello Stormwater Designers, welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions instructional videos. If you missed part one in this series on how to use EPA Swim, we downloaded the software and got started. Now we're going to go through some of the basic tutorials that they offer, do some of their modeling scenarios here, and uh, break down what exactly is going on. So I'm going to go to the basic tutorial right here. And so it's going to walk us through um, what we can do to learn and get started with Swim. So we're just going to go step by step through this. So it says, this tutorial provides an introduction to using EPA SWIM version 5 for modeling the quantity and quality of stormwater runoff produced from urban sites. The topics to be covered include project setup, instructing a SWIM model, setting, setting the properties of SWIM objects, saving and opening projects, running a single event analysis, view, viewing simulation results, simulating runner, runoff water quality, and running a continuous simulation. And then we can click this arrow here to go to the next, the, the next part of the tutorial. If you already have EPA Swim, you can follow along or you can just watch the video here. So here's an example study area. In this tutorial, we will model the drainage system serving a 12-acre residential area. The system layout is shown below and consists of subcatchment areas S1 through S3, storm sewer conduits C1 through C4, and conduit junctions J1 through J4. The system discharges to a creek at the point labeled out 1, that's this point over here, we will first go through the steps of creating the object shown in this diagram on SWIM study area map and setting the various properties of these objects. Then we will simulate the water quantity and quality response to a three inch six hour rainfall event as well as a continuous multi-year record. For doing continuous simulation, you're going to want to use a continuous simulation software such as WWHM or WimSwim as a SWIM doesn't have the greatest continuous simulation modeling here. But we're just going to follow along with their scenarios. You can click the view map button that appears in each topic's header pan panel to refer to this drawing at any time and then use the forward button to move to the next topic. Okay, so we're going to move to the next topic here. So this is project setup. Our first task is to create a, a new project in EPA Swim and make sure that certain default options are selected. Using these defaults, we will simplify the data entry tasks later on. Okay, so we launched EPA Swim and then we have a new blank project here. We're going to select Project Defaults to open Project Defaults dialog. Okay, I'm going to go Project Defaults here to open them up. Okay, here's our Project Defaults. On the ID Labels page, set the ID prefixes as follows, and then leave the other blank. Okay, so for rain gauges, we're going to do Gauge. Subcatchments is S. Junctions is J. Outfalls is Out. Conduits is C and ID increment is 1. This will make EPA Swim automatically label new objects with consecutive numbers following the designated prefix. Okay, good. And then it says, on the subcatchments page of the dialog, set the following default values. These are to be the default values for our subcatchments. Area of 4, width of 400, a slope of 0.5, percent impervious of 50, the end imperv of 0 0.001, the end imperv of 0.1, and then the destore imperv of 0.05, the destore perv of 0.05, so we have those, and then percent zero impervious 25%. And then the infiltration model, we're going to select modified green amped. So here's that box right here. Modified green amped, suction head of 3.5, conductivity of 0.5, and initial uh, deficit of 0.26. We have 0.25 right now, let's go to 0.26. And then on, so we'll select OK there. Then on the nodes and links page, we're going to go with node invert 0, node max depth of 4, conduit length of 400. The shape is circular with a max depth, let's see if I can find a max depth of 1.0. Okay, so conduit geometry. So I'm going through this full time here. So conduit geometry, circular, here we go. We do want it to be circular with a maximum height of one. Okay, so we do have that one barrel. Got it. So that's all set. Flow units to CFS, depth, and then kinematic waves. We're going to select kinematic wave and then click OK to accept all these in the dialog box. Okay, so now we have our settings set up. Let's go to the next task here. Next, we'll set some map display options so that the ID labels and symbols will be displayed as we add objects to the study area map. And links will have a, will have direction arrows. So go to select tools, map display options. So we've got map options here. Select the subcatchments page. Subcatchments right here. 
select the fill style to diagonal and symbol size to S, or excuse me, 5, that is selected, then select the nodes page, and select node size to 5. Okay, now it's at 5, select the annotations page, and check out the boxes that will display ID labels for subcatchments, nodes, and links. Subcatch, nodes, link values, there we go, or sub ID labels, so not the values, but the ID labels. So subcatch, node, and links, leave the others unchecked. Finally, select the flows arrow page, select the fill style, and then select, set the arrow size to seven, then click the OK button there. Before placing objects on the map, we should set its dimensions. So we're going to go select, view, dimensions, it's going to bring up the dimensions map dialog here. And then we're going to leave them at the default for this example. Finally, look in the status bar at the bottom of the main window and check that the auto length feature is off, which it is right here. If it's set on, then click the down arrow button and select auto length off, off from the pop-up menu that appears. Also make sure that the offsets option is set to depth, which it is. If set to elevation, then click the down arrow button and select it to depth. Okay, so we have that all selected there. Let's go to the next part. Drawing the drainage area subcatchments. So we are now ready to begin adding components to the study area map. We will start with the subcatchments. Remember that you can click the view map button of this tutorial at any time to see how we want our map to look eventually. So view map, this is what we eventually want to get. So we can leave that down here for reference or click to open it back up. Begin by selecting the subcatchments category under hydrology. Okay, hydrology, subcatchments, and then uh, in, in the project browser, uh, browser panel, then click the plus button on the toolbar underneath the object category listing in the project panel or select project add a new subcatchment from the main menu. Notice how the mouse cursor changes shape to a pencil when you move it over the map. Okay, so we have a pencil now and now we'll be able to draw that object. Move the mouse to the map location where one of the corners of subcatchment S1 lies and left click the mouse. Do the same for the next three corners and then right click the mouse or hit the enter key to close up the rectangle that represents subcatchment S1. You can press the escape, escape key if you want to cancel your partially drawn subcatchment and start over again. Don't worry if the shape or position of the object isn't quite right. We'll go back later and show how to fix this. Next, move the mouse to subcatchment S2's location and draw its outline, then repeat for subcatchment S3. Okay, let's start with S1. Let's look at our map here. S1 is probably going to end up being somewhere over here. One, two, let me move this uh, diagram there. Okay, and so we've closed our shape there. I want to make sure I did that correctly. So, and then right click the mouse, hit the enter key, close up the rectangle. Okay, so we close up the rectangle there. Um, and now we're going to do it for the other subcatchments. So, view map looks like S3 would be over here. Close up the rectangle, let's view the map again, and then S2 is going to be somewhere down here. So S2 will be here. Drawing my best rectangles. Okay, so we have our three subcatchments here. Observe how sequential ID labels are generated automatically as we add the map objects. Okay, great. So we've got our subcatchments drawn. Next, we'll add in the junction nodes and outfall node that comprise part of the drainage network. Okay, to begin adding junctions, select the junction category from the project browser under hydraulics. So now we're going to go to hydraulics, nodes, and junctions. And just like we do with subcatchments, we're going to hit plus to add those. So click the plus button or select project, add a new junction. So you can always do, do it that way too. Move the mouse to the position of junction J1 and left click it. Do the same for J2 through J4. Okay. So now we're going to add junctions. Let's look at the map. J1 appears to be, so let me move this over here, uh, right here. So I'm going to click there, J1, J2 somewhere down here, J3 somewhere over here, and then J4 somewhere over here. Okay, so I did J2 through J4, and then to add the outfall node, select outfalls from the project browser. Outfalls. Click the plus. Move the mouse to the outfalls location. So the outfall is going to be over here, plus outfalls right there. Okay, so we got the outfall done. Note how the outfall is automatically given the name out one. Okay, so we're doing a good job here. Next, 
system links is what we're going to do next. Now we'll add the storm sewer conduits that connect our drainage system nodes to one another. You must have created the links and nodes as described in the previous topic before you can create the link. So you have to create the, the end nodes first. We'll begin with conduit C1 and con that, which connects ju junction J1 to J2. Okay. So put that, that down there. Make this a little smaller. That Xing out. There we go. Okay, so we want conduits now. So let's see if I can find uh, hydraulics links. Okay, hydraulics links conduits. There we go. Plus we connect uh, which connects junction J1 to J2. Okay, J1 to J2. Good. And then move the mouse over to junction J2 and left click to create the conduit. And then repeat steps two through three for conduits C2 through C4. Okay, so we're just going to connect these different conduits together. So this is conduit two according to our diagram here. Then up to J3. Now we have to click again to do it. And then that seems to be our three conduits that we have set up here. Oh no, we have a conduit four, J4 to out. Okay, so there's our conduit set up. We're looking pretty close to uh, their diagram here, not too bad. And then to complete the construction of our study area schematic, we need to add rain gauge. So select the rain gauge category from the project browser panel and either click the plus button. Okay, so same thing here, rain gauges. Now we're going to add a rain gauge. And that goes right about here. So the rain gauge added and locate it and left click the mouse. Okay, and what I want to do is, whoops, is what I think I missed is they have some connections here and I'm not sure what those are. Those are just links. Because they have the, the subcatchments connected to the junctions. I want to make sure I didn't miss that. Um, doesn't look like it quite yet. So we'll worry about that later. So repositioning objects. At this point, we have completed the drawing, the example study area. Your system should look like the one seen by pressing the view map button. Okay, so we don't need to worry about those links. So we have that set up here. We have the rain gauge. At this point, we have completed drawing the example study area. Your system should look like the one seen by pressing the view map button. If the rain gauge subcatchments or nodes out of position, you can move them around by clicking the arrow button on the map toolbar and place the map in object selection mode. Okay, this looks like object selection mode here. Clicking on the object to be moved, dragging the object with the left mouse button held down in its new position. Okay. To reshape a subcatchment's outline, with the map in object selection mode, click on the subcatchment centroid, indicated by the solid square. Okay. And then click the mouse button here on the map toolbar to put the map into vertex selection mode. Okay, so let me see if I can find uh, that here, the map toolbar. Here we go. Map display options. Nope. Okay, so if you click and then right click, you can now move the vertices. So select vertices here, and then we can move them around. Okay, vertices, and now I can click and move them here to make them better. So I drew them pretty good to begin with. This one's not, this one's not great. Let's see if I can get it a little more rectangular here. Uh, delete this vertex. There we go. This one's a bit more rectangular. Okay. Not bad. I'm going to go with that. Move the junction there. Move this junction. All 
Alright, that's not bad. That's pretty close to the original drawing. Drag the vertex. Okay, we did that. If need be, vertices, vertices can be added or deleted from the outline by right-clicking the mouse and selecting the appropriate option from the pop-up. When finished, click the mouse button to return to object selection mode. Okay, same procedure can also be used to reshape a link. Okay, so that's part one of running through the CPA swim tutorial. We'll finish that off in the next video. Um, we have some free courses for WWHM 2012 and our hydrology guides. Click the link down below to view those for 100% free, and we'll see you guys in the next video.